love him. But you have dishonored the poor man, and not the rich ones who oppress you, and the ones who drag you to court. Are they not the ones who blaspheme the honorable name of which you are called? If you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You are doing well, but if you show partiality, you are committing sin and are convicted by the law of transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails one point has become accountable for all of it. What good is it, my brothers, if someone says in his faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in meal food, and one piece says to them, Go in peace, be warm and filled, show, giving him the things they need for their body. What good is that? So all faith by itself is it does not have works is dead. But someone will say, You have faith, and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Good morning. I'm so glad you came to church today. It's really great that you came. You know, I want to tell you something about Jesus. I'm not sure that you know it. But it, that Jesus was Jewish. And I don't know if you ever have met a Jewish person before, okay? Jewish people are, are uh, people who came from a different part of the country, okay? And God has a history of working with these uh, particular people called Jews, okay? And they were Jewish. And God loved the Jewish people so much that he brought them out of slavery from a foreign land called Egypt, and he brought them to a different country. And then Jesus grew up, okay? And he obeyed all the Jewish laws and customs. And when he became an adult, he called his disciples, right? And guess what nationality those disciples were? Can you guess? Jewish. They were, okay? But one day, Jesus says to his disciples, I want to go someplace different today. Let's go to Tyre and Sidon. And those cities were in a different place. And I can imagine the disciples saying something like this. Oh, Jesus, do we really have to go to Tyre and Sidon? That's very far away. And Jesus was saying, yes, it is far away, but those people need to hear about God. And the disciples might have said, well, you know, Jesus, I've heard bad things about those people who live over in Tyre and Sidon. And Jesus might have said, well, Yes, you may have heard different things about that, but they need to hear about God's love too. And then another disciple may have said, well, wait a minute. I heard somebody in my family say that those people from Tyre and Sidon, they're kind of like dogs. They're not even nice people. And Jesus was saying, are you saying those people from Tyre and Sidon don't need to hear about the love of God? Well, they went to Tyre and Sidon. And one of the things that it tells us is that God loves not just Jewish people, but all kinds of people, right? And you and I need to remember that when God has love for people, well, I tell you what, it could be people in the next town over, it could be in the next state over, it could be in the next country over. Do you think God likes people who speak a different language than you? He does, yeah. Do you think God understands those languages? He sure does. He understands all the languages. I think he made those languages. So God is good, and God is telling us to not only to be friends with everybody, but to tell God and to tell people everywhere that God loves them. That's what Jesus would do, and that's what Jesus would have us do. So let's pray together and put our hands together. Dear Lord, thank you for loving everybody in the whole wide world. Help us to remember that you are not just ours, but you are for everybody, so help us to make friends with everybody and to remember that everybody are the children that you have made. Amen. Thank you for coming up. We continue with hymn number 203. <laughs>
Holy Spirit. Maybe you're noticing what I'm noticing. There's a lot of people in need today. Leah Joseph, in a city not too far from New Orleans, said, The power was out. The wind was uprooting trees around our house and peeling off the shingles. Driving rain started pouring into the house, even seeping through the electrical sockets. I took my two children out to the car where they tried to sleep. Though the car was shaking as the storm passed, it still felt safer than the house. Similar experiences happened close to us in Mullica Hill, New Jersey. Don't forget the fires that are taking homes and businesses out in the western part of our country. Or those people who are going through displacement and fear. Those fleeing from Afghanistan and those who are remaining there. So many people are standing in need at this very moment in time. We can say to ourselves, boy, I'm sure I'm glad I'm here instead of over there. But I don't figure that's what God is saying. God is watching out and looking over all these people, all these needs. And it occurs to me that God does more than observe our human condition. He reaches out to the people he creates. People matter. In our scripture from the Gospel of Mark today, we see Jesus reaching out to a woman from Tyre. A woman who is Greek in background, a Syrophoenician by birth. And this description of her is very important to us. After Jesus has this encounter with this woman, the text says he left Tyre and went through Sidon, through the region of the Ten Cities, a region on the southwest of Lake Galilee where Jesus healed a deaf and mute man. Well, you know, that's a considerable distance from one location to the other. It's something like 86 miles. Why are these distinctions so important. None of these areas are Jewish areas. Jesus has deliberately entered into pagan territory. They are not on his way home or in his way anywhere. Jesus made a decision consciously to go to people who were not Jewish in background to heal and to teach people who are not part of the Jewish community. Not only that, these people do not subscribe to the God that he represents. Greeks were polytheistic. They worshiped many gods. And so did those of the people of Syrophoenicia and other pagan territories. Listen at verse 4. What happened up in that northern region? From there, Jesus arose and went to the region of Tyre and Sidon, and he entered a house. And he did not want anyone to know, yet he could not be hidden. But he immediately a woman whose little daughter was possessed by an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile, a Syrophoenician by birth. And she begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. And he said to her, Let the children be fed first, for it is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. And he said to her for this statement, You may go your way. The demon has left your daughter. She went home. And she found the child lying in bed and the demon gone. Jesus, Jesus commends this woman for her answer. 
But you need to know that Jesus was giving her a test. She has come to him begging for him to heal her daughter. She has not gone to her own gods or to her own temples. She's come to the living Son of God. This is the kind of faith and curiosity that gives her the courage to reach out to Jesus. A Jewish rabbi that she has heard about but has never seen before. And now she's bold enough to go and ask Jesus to heal her daughter. Likewise, when Jesus reaches out to the people in the southern region, in that region what is called the Ten Cities or the Decapolis, we, we begin at verse 31. Then he returned from the region of Tyre and Sidon to the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis, and they brought to him a man who was deaf and had a speech impediment, and they begged him to lay his hand on him. Taking him aside from the crowd privately, he put his fingers into his ears, and after spitting, touched his tongue. And looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, At the thought that is be opened, and his ears were opened, and his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Jesus charged them to tell no one. But the more he charged them, the more zealously they proclaimed it, and they were astonished beyond measure, saying, He has done all things well. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. Again, the people who were not Jewish reached out to Jesus. They begged that Jesus would heal. And again, Jesus heals him. And the people are amazed. They could have continued to fret and worry over their condition. But instead they reached out to Jesus. They took a chance to go out on the limb. To go out beyond their own culture and faith and to put their trust in Jesus, the son of the Israelites. Did you know that you do the same thing? When you pray, you reach out. You don't pray because you don't believe that God is not there or that God is not listening. You believe and you pray because you are reaching out. And you know God is listening to you. Maybe it's your last resort. Maybe you're praying and you're talking to God. You're wondering if anything will be happening. But you do believe that God is there when you are praying. And as you pray, you're praying that God will reach out to you even as you are reaching to him. A recent study shows that one in seven Americans suffers with depression. About 17.3 million people. According to a Gallup poll that tested more than 550,000 people, came to the conclusion that said, people of faith are less likely to record having been diagnosed with depression over the course of their lifetime than those who are non-religious. Reaching out to God is helpful. It's helpful for your emotional and mental health. That's what St. Paul said in the fourth chapter of Philippians. He said it this way. He said, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Reaching out to God makes sense. It makes sense because as you reach out to God, you know that God has first reached out to you. 
From day one, it was God's intent to establish relationship with us, his people. You could call it God's DNA. It is very much a central component of who God is in order to establish relationship with us. It's part of not only God's behavior, it's part of his attitude toward us. In love, God created us for love. Sin gets in the way. And sin manifests itself as we isolate ourselves from God and one another. Faith and trust in God gets clouded because of sin. I want you to hear this closely. Faith is easy, but faith is difficult. Faith is easy, but faith is difficult. It's easy because all you really need to do is trust in God. To trust in Him to love you, to save you, to forgive you. And at the same time, faith is tough, it's difficult. Because you can't see God. And it's easier to trust in the things that you can see. Sadly, we trust more in the physical. Sadly, we trust more in ourselves. So what do we do? We place our trust in the God who has reached out to us by sending his only son to live among us. Who taught us how to love, how to live, who paid the price of our sins by dying on the cross. His death and his resurrection from the dead opened to us a newfound faith, forgiveness, and real hope to handle every challenge that comes our way. Because God has reached to us, we can reach to other people, people who need to know God's love. Our second lesson today was from the epistle called James. And he makes a very good point here. He says, faith without works is dead. It gives you a lot to think about there because it drives home the fact that our faith is more than a God and me thing. If we love God, then it's time we start getting busy to love one another, to care for people who are different, for people who are far away, being open to the homeless, contributing towards those who are hungry, offering help to those who are di displaced. The world is waiting for God's people to care. And when we make offerings to the ministry here at Hope, we are not just keeping the light bills on. We, through our ministry, are touching the needs of people here in the U.S. and in many different places beyond. We live in a time when people have all kinds of needs. And people, these people in need are all around us. Who is God? Our God is a God who reaches out because he loves us. Who are we? We are people God is using to reach out to those he loves. Praise be to God for his awesome love, for his care for all humanity. May he instill in us that same kind of desire and love as well. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus today and always. Amen. Please rise as we join in the Confession of the Apostles' Creed.
blessed and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers and deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all honor and glory and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took, and when he had given thanks, he gave, he took the cup, and he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament to my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And do this not into temptation, but deliver us evil, for thy name is kingdom, and the power Glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you 
correct. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Amen. Thank you. 